Good evening, Mr. Bollinger. Thanks for agreeing to this interview. Uh, while most traders might already know about the Bollinger Bands, could you help share with, with our viewers what these bands are, uh, what was the impetus for the creation of these bands, and how can these bands actually help traders? Well, Bollinger Bands are curves that are drawn in and around the price structure that define on a relative basis whether price is relatively high or relatively low. This is information that traders can use to create trading systems and to help them make trading decisions. The base of the bands is a moving average, um, typically a, a 20 period moving average. And then the line above the moving average is spread above the moving average by a measure of volatility. Um, and the line below the moving average is spread below the moving average, again, by that same measure of volatility. The key to the success of Bollinger Bands is that the use of volatility. So when the market's very quiet, the bands will be quite tight to price. And when the market's very volatile, they'll be much wider. So um, th what, what that means is that the definition of relatively high and low adapts to the price structure as it evolves. A, a typical example of this might be um, trying to trade something like a, a double bottom in a, in a stock where, where the stock comes down and makes a, a low and then bounces and comes back and makes a, a second low. Well, we can measure those lows instead of in relation to one another. We can re measure them in relation to the Bollinger Bands and then use that information to create a trading system to trade that, that sort of formation. The impetus um, for me to create Bollinger Bands was pretty straightforward. Um, I had a trading system which used fixed width trading bands. Um, these were bands that were uh, fixed above and below a moving average by a percentage of the value of the moving average, say the moving average plus 5% or the moving average less 5%. Um, and the problem was is that you had to adapt those bands all the time. You might have to widen them as markets started trending or narrow them as markets started to consolidate. And when you did that, you let your emotions into the trading process. Um, if you were bullish, you painted a bullish picture. And if you were bearish, you painted a bearish picture. And so I didn't want to do that. I wanted a, a, an adaptive set of trading bands that were driven by market action. And at, at the time, I was an option trader. Um, so I was very concerned with volatility and studying volatility. One day I realized maybe we could use volatility to set the width of the bands. And that turned out to be the right answer. And after a little bit of experimentation, trial and error, um, I came up with the formulation of Bollinger Bands. Okay, cool. That sounds great. Um, so maybe you could help us uh, illustrate a, a, a scenario or a case whereby uh, Bollinger Bands have uh, been able to help identify trading opportunities. I think just now you were mentioning how we could use Bollinger Bands to... Uh, for, for a double bottom scenario. Is there any other uh, uh, trading opportunities that you can look at using volume oh, bands? You know, there are lots of trading opportunities um, created by the, that can be created around the bands, basically. Um, some people um, try to um, buy when price gets near the lower band. Um, some people try to sell when price gets near the upper band. They're often frustrated by that because they, they feel that, you know, a tag of the upper band might be an automatic seller or a tag of the lower band might be an automatic buy. But the fact is, is that you need a little bit more information than that. Um, often we use volume indicators and compare the price action within the bands to the action of volume indicators and then use that to determine whether we wish to make a trade or not. Um, an another uh, um, classic example of, of an approach to trading using Bollinger Bands is the squeeze. Many people are interested in, in this idea. In fact, it's probably the most popular Bollinger Band idea. Um, that is, um, in periods of low volatility, the bands will come very, very close together. We say they're squeezed or pinched together. Um, and um, then as uh, the new trend emerges, the bands start to widen, and they'll, they'll widen pretty dramatically. So it, it's that area where there's a lot of compression. We could we say there's a lot of price compression in the squeeze. That is the opportunity. Um, for example, um, not too long ago, there was a squeeze in the 
S&P 500 futures that we trade here in the U.S. And um, it led to a, a, a pretty decent decline in, in the market. So uh, it was a pretty good setup and alert that there was a, a lot more risk in the market than people were thinking at the time. Cool. So, um, so you mentioned about the trading opportunities that, that, that were present previously, uh, this S&P, uh, the futures that you're looking at. Um, in your opinion, with reference to current uh, the, the Bollinger Bands currently, what kinds of trading opportunities do you think are present at the moment? 